morning, and welcome to Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. I'm Pyro. And I'm Snake. So we're coming to you pseudo live at uh, WLRA 88.1 FM, the start at Lewis University in Romeoville. Today we have not only um, a special new contributor, by a snake here. Uh, we've also got a review for a movie, Warm Bodies, and Sen played a video game. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. You'll have to stay tuned to the second half of the show to find out if it's more like Vanquish or Bayonetta. Vanquishetta? Vanquishetta? It, it's, you're, so you're saying it's mediocre. It, it's not awesome, but it's not terrible. I thought we were talking about a new pasta dish. Mmm, I would eat some Vanquishetta. That sounds delicious. I mean, now that we're just making up words... But before that, we saw warm bodies, or at least all of us other than Sen did, because Sen is a loser who's not contributing except with half of the show. <laughs> On the day it was released. I think he's sad. Well, this will technically be airing the day after it was released, but, you know, no big day. Mm. They'll just wait to post the web version for like a week just to make you seem untimely, Jeff. Ha ha ha, spite. You know, I could have spent the week playing Devil May Cry. Anywho. Okay. Uh, Pyro, don't do that to me. Just saying. Spending <laughs> send is not worth breaking my heart. <laughs> oh, I would never delay the posting of the show. Too much professionalism in this joint. Yeah, uh, Pyro, think about it. I have to get up at 4 a.m. to make sure this thing hits the airwaves on time. We are not going to delay me. <laughs> and she has to walk 15 miles in the snow every day. A uh, little both directions by way of, like, this crazy pneumatic table. It's got pistons on both sides of the road, and just this enormous steam engine lifts the road such that she has to walk uphill, going home and going to school. Pyro's given this a lot of thought. It's cost, like, a billion dollars to build, but it was worth it just to make Pixie's life harder. <laughs> I hate you both. Hey, so he, Pixie, I, I didn't go. give me the, the broad overview of what is Warm Bodies. What's it about? Warm Bodies is Romeo and Juliet with a zombie skin overlay. <laughs> and podcast. <laughs> Warning, we're about to spoil Warm Bodies, so go see that if you were inclined to and didn't want to be spoiled on that. No, it's actually really clever and funny, even though the parallels are blatantly transparent and obvious. Or at least they should be, even though some of the parallels weren't obvious until well into halfway the, through the movie. It's rated PG-13, so for the high school-aged audience that this is probably targeted towards, it's going to be, like, earth-shattering for them as they figure this out slowly. I saw this movie with my mom, You're and I saw the realization dawn on her exactly in the scene where they do yawn what light over yonder window breaks. <laughs> that was exactly when um, Daniel got it, and... Uh, he actually had to let me in on it because I basically didn't get it until the until the balcony scene, and I went for a cheap Aladdin joke instead. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> Quite true. You know that would have been an appropriate time for it to just shift into a musical. Yeah, zombie musical. <laughs> yeah, Thriller just two. grunting and groaning. <laughs> So this seems like a bit of a trend to remake very classic stories with new skins over them. Because the, the movie that I saw that sticks in my mind just before Warm Bodies is Django Unchained. Which is basically a, a resetting of Siegfried and Brunhilde. That's it's, with, it's not with, even basically, it's explicitly said in there. Yeah, but it's like, okay, the Siegfried and Brunhilde story is diegetic to Django Unchained. By the way, I'm going to be throwing around diegesis a lot in this show because my favorite scene in Warm Bodies was quite possibly where they're doing the makeup on R. And they, it, it goes into... I don't remember the song off the top of my head, but I'll insert a clip here. Probably a lot of us. No way. <laughs> yeah, way. Would you change this song, please? <laughs> and it's got a song playing and you think it's just the soundtrack to the movie and then julie is like would you turn that music off that's annoying like zong it's in the scene and she was like oh i thought it was funny yeah wasn't it i think it was pretty woman it was pretty woman you're right i saw it last weekend so it was, it's a bit of a reach Whereas, and, and Brunhilde in Django Unchained was named Broomhilde. 
Juliet is named Julia. Was just like, okay, the names are slightly different. Yeah, instead of Paris, we have Perry, and instead of Romeo, we have R, and instead of the nurse, we have Nora, who's a nurse anyway, but... <laughs> but she's sassy. She is the sassy one. Yes, indeed. Actually been more of the slightly ditzy teenage, oh my god, friend, but still kick not in, a, not in a literal way, though, I don't think. Mm. Number five at the box office right now at nine million, which is not all that... Impressive, but... No, it's only showing on one screen in my town. She is mm. usually a sign that the theaters don't have much confidence in it making money. Although, I was, go I we went to, like, an early morning matinee showing, and there was, like, 15 people there. We went and saw it, uh, what was it, Sunday, Saturday. And, yeah. uh, there were, there were still a sizable amount of showings. There was, what, like, maybe five that day? Or five, yeah. And the theater itself was pretty packed. Yeah. In fact, we showed up half. We showed up half an hour early, and still it was like, "Dang, I'm glad we got here when we did, so that we could get seats." Oh yes, good thing someone thought of that too. Yes, but no, yes, al that... almost the entire audience was couples, also. And you could see why. Yeah the the poster kind of paints it as a romantic movie with cold bodies, warm hearts as the tagline. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you it don't, if you don't know that it's Romeo and Juliet, is. you still might know to go to it as a couple. It was, it was very much a date movie. Very much so, yes. I think the technique I, I, I of reskinning and sorry, go ahead. I think the technique of reskinning an old story is employed to a bit more effect here, actually, than it was in Django Unchained. Although in Django Unchained, it blew my mind more because I wasn't expecting it. Uh, but the, setting this up as Romeo and Juliet lets you expect at the very end that both of the protagonists are probably gonna die. It's like, that's a way to build some tension in that you wouldn't have without this device. True, true. I especially liked the scene where he turns to life just as he's shot through the chest, and it's like, hooray, I'm alive! F I'm alive! This, this is a very inopportune time to stop being a zombie. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's hard to get more into it without spoiling all the really funny parts, and goodness knows there are lots of them. I think you were pretty much, you, you and I were pretty much sold on that, uh, with the, with the opening internal monologue going on. Well, yeah, that's the thing, and the, the thing is, this movie is full Nicholas of so many- Nicholas Holt was really funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a hit. The crazy thing about this movie is it used so many different elements that have already been used so many times in other movies, like- Romeo and Juliet, zombies, romantic comedies. I mean, I'm the, and also the whole thing is kind of a whole play on the Twilight fad going on that's kind of choking to death right now. But, and also works of in, using internal monologue. But the thing about this movie is it uses all of those just sparingly enough and also in such a way that you never get tired of them. You never get exhausted by any of this. Yeah, we get a lot of internal monologue, but it's never just death by internal monologue, or just <laughs> Roman <laughs> lines. To, yeah, yeah, I, I realized what I said. But it's, oh! <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, it's... We were, we were pretty much sold at the very beginning, because, yes, he was using internal monologue, which can really be used for good and for evil, but in this case, it was used for good. Uh, you might remember, um... Uh, the actor playing R in Warm Bodies, uh, Nicholas Holt, you might remember from X-Men First Class. He was Hank McCoy slash Beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the scene where they cleaned him up, I felt like, man, you were already pretty hunky before, and now you're still pretty hunky, so I don't He's know that adorable. they changed very much. Oh, well, yes, yeah, as far as zombies go, yeah. I have a feminist complaint about Warm Bodies, which is oh. that Was it Julie the man bitches not... line? Because that bothered me a lot, too. Or is it the whole, like, abduction thing? Yeah, I do recall at that one, mm, bitches, man, I do recall two middle fingers being shoved in front of my face. I don't remember, was that you or was that the girl next to me? It was the girl next to you, by which oh, I mean me. Because oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was perfectly in timed right after his line. Double yes. deuce, yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, it is both of those, but also the part where Julie is kind of completely helpless in combat situations constantly. Like, the zombies are portrayed a couple of times as I having know, no reflexes. I because she saves Perry in one of the very early scenes. True, when we see them go through that... When we, uh, see, them, uh, when we see them sneaking out of the city compound thing, whatever, 
she, you know, uses her uh, pistol to save Perry. By killing his zombified dad. Yep. Right. And, okay, and then there's so- the other scene where they're, like, she's running through that same area with somebody else. I don't remember if it's R or somebody else, but she's running through there and, like, shooting behind her. And she takes a couple out. So she's not totally helpless. No, no. And you saw when she when she and R first interact, she throws that knife straight into his center mass, which was a pretty yes. good shot. Although completely ineffectual against zombies, which the, yeah. that scene I found kind of funny because it's like, okay, you're field prepping to go salvaging in zombie territory. When is a boot knife ever really going to do you much good? Dude, a knife is useful in all kinds of situations, not just as a weapon. Sure. Could be useful for just opening stuff. True that. Well, the scene that particularly concerned me about Julie not being very effective was, okay, R is shown as not being able to play patty cake or whatever that slap hands game is. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's like a reflex thing where you're supposed to, like, pull your hands away as the other person, like, tries to slap them. You and only do so, that if you really hate the other person. His, uh, his reaction time is obviously, like, nothing because he's dead, so... It's and funny because he end, can't there's... feel. <laughs> and then in the end, there's that scene where the human is playing catch with that corpse, and it just yeah. keeps beaning the corpse with the <laughs> baseball, because corpses have no good reflexes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when they're running away from the city, Julie and R, uh, they get attacked by two bonies. And, and, like, a bony pins R, and a bony pins Julie. And R, hand-to-hand, fights the bony off. And then Julie's like, eh, eh. And then R hand-to-hand fights Julie's bony. Which is like, oh, this... why, why is R able to win this hand-to-hand fight and <laughs> Julie is not? If you don't recognize the context for what bony means here, it starts to sound really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I also felt like the bonies kind of suffered from Chitari syndrome, which is that they looked really threatening. And man, the character design on the skeletons is super intimidating. Oh, but, they don't actually make a whole lot of sense, because if they're just bones, then they need, like, skeletal muscle in order to be able to move. I think in some ways we're not supposed to be thinking We're not supposed science. to be thinking that much, but... This, yeah. isn't, this, isn't, this isn't zombies in the most scientific method, say, Walking Dead or any other one of those. This is more in metaphorical terms, because, again, eating someone's brains is not exactly the best method of getting, you know, anything but possible nutrients, let alone memories. Yeah, there's some, like, magic elements. So, yeah. There's, there's definitely is, some magical elements going on in there. This is more of mystical storytelling than science, and that was actually one of the things I found a bit more refreshing about this. I would go ahead and call Warm Bodies a little bit dumb, but very fun all the way through. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. yeah, you have to kind of put, like, aside the whole, like, Stockholm Syndrome-y bit, but it's certainly not nearly as bad of, at it as, um... Beauty and the Beast is. Uh, let's not... Uh, yeah. Sorry. That argument always gives me a headache. I almost... I'm not going to succeed in this, but I almost want to cast this movie in a way that abandons the romance between Julie and R and is just like... R is having this struggle to feel alive, which is why he's having these conversations at the bar with Marcus where they're trying to come up with words. And saving her is his rebellion against his zombiness and then they turn the zombies and no romance ever happens I so, almost so you want to get rid of the romance you want to turn this into two dudes hanging out at a bar <laughs> well I want to turn that into our overcoming his lower nature actually the particular quote that stood out to me was Julie and R in the suburbs and Julie describes the human condition as that's what people you know, we try to be better. Sometimes we got a second but... It's like, all right. Well, that's a fairly succinct pull quote that you could put at the top of a seventh grade English class essay. Okay, so I cannot, like, actually say this over radio waves, but I'm really surprised that this got the ratings that it did. I know it's generally accepted in the public consciousness that hurting zombies is not the same as hurting humans, and so you can get away with a lot more violence in that regard. But there was a lot of swearing in this. Mm-hmm. There was at least one f bomb. There were two instances of an s. It's just. What is its rating? This is PG thirteen. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah, PG thirteen. 
hence why we saw all the high school couples in there, and we were like, yeah, this is definitely gonna, like, blow some 10th graders' minds. <laughs> this movie also exhibits the phenomenon where brutal violence is much less of a ratings target than even basic nudity, because there's the same scene in the suburbs, which no, is... No, it's the coarse language that I'm talking about, specifically. Right. And I, I, th I thought you could only get away with, like, so much before you got an R. Well, this one only has one R, remember? <laughs> uh, the standards are all kind of subjective, and they've been... I thought it was weird. Did we ever hear Marcus's name before the very end? He was credited in the credits as M. M? No, he's just M. I've got the IMDB page here, and he's just M. And, uh, yeah, he introduces himself as Marcus at the very end, uh, in that conversation with Nora. But, um, I'm trying to think, yeah, no, I, right at the very beginning where he's like, this dude's pretty much my best friend, yeah, I, I think we don't actually get a name for that. He probably doesn't remember it much like R. I have been referring to him as, quote, friend for the whole movie. But it's weird that he's credited that way. I figure if he's, his name is M in the credits, then he has to be played by Dame Judy Dench. That's the law. All M's are Judy Dench. Not anymore. Didn't you, see, didn't you see Skyfall? No. Oh. But I love you, Judy Dench. You can't go. Spoilers for that, too, folks. <laughs> spoilers kind of one for there. all things forever. I love spoilers. I, f I feel like I enjoy listening to podcasts on a similar level as actually consuming the stuff itself and avoiding spoilers yeah, really kneecaps podcasts. Pyrosim, I, I keep having to explain this to you. You are weird in that you, like, actively enjoy spoilers. Most people don't. Most people like to be surprised by things. This is true. I want, I actually already heard the ending to The Village before I saw it. And that kind of... Oh yeah, that totally kind of... Well, the it, twist it? in the village is the entirety of the village. Like, that movie has no substance other than its twist. Yeah, when they already had to take it away, it was already a disappointment on top of a disappointment. I watched it for a class in high school. M. Night Shyamalan is actually his South Park character. Like, there's not a distinction between those two. Also, it occurs to me how small the main cast of Warm Bodies is, because I'm looking at the IMDb page. Yep. And you got R. Julie... Nora, M, and Perry and such. But then after you get past uh, Perry's dad, you get boy at airport, girl at airport, young man at ATM, soldier number uh, two. Do you mean, do you, do you mean Ju uh, Julie's dad? Cause no, Perry's, Perry's dad's here too. Yeah. But he was a zombie, remember? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, well, I mean, yeah, so he got like maybe five whole seconds of screen time. Yeah, he was credited above Berg, whoever Berg is. Apparently there was a Berg in this movie. So, the the background characters of the little boy and little girl zombie uh, appear basically twice, but are cinematographically significant, like the camera sort of focuses on them a lot. And they're first introduced in a scene where they're going opposite the opposite direction of R on a pair of moving sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And because of the, X, the most recent XKCD, I happen to expect them to high-five in that scene. Hmm. I'll embed this in the video. Just read that right before I saw the movie. Hey, Sen, wake up. <laughs> hey, yeah. oh, it lives. Uh, now uh, I'm scared. I'm, I'm allowed to come out of my corner? I, uh, no. Did you have you a have nice to nap, stay in Sen? the corner. Just Darn, wake up. I, I just started decorating my corner and, you know, watching tomorrow's feed dump ahead of schedule. Wow, well, I want to go to your future? corner. I do not, in fact, have a future corner. The escape has just apparently made a mistake. Oh, nice. What? Uh, and by tomorrow, you mean today, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Nope. <laughs> None of this, none of this fake radio magic timeline. Hey, welcome to behind the curtain. It's yeah. cold back here. Also, there's a Wizard of Oz, and he's really just a lawyer. I'm not looking forward to that uh, new Wizard of Oz movie. That could just be me, but I'm not looking forward to it. What are you? What do you not like about it? Well, it it looks like the remade Alice in Wonderland all over again, which basically which basically looks like an extended ad for Hot Topic. To be fair, at least Milia Kunis is in it. I could go either way on it. I am I am optimistic, but I can certainly see where you're coming from with its visual design. So Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just strange. I just never liked that look very much. Nerd Talk has a mixed history with Platinum Games. and Also a mixed you... history with reviewing things within a few months of its release. Well, that too. <laughs> but 
Uh, many of us, as you can tell by one of our contributors being named Snake, after Naked Snake, in fact, or Solid Snake if you want, but a Metal Gear Solid main character. We care a lot about Metal Gear Solid. So, is... I'm gonna actually give you three options from my first question. Is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance more like Bayonetta, Vanquish, or an actual Metal Gear game? And I'm expecting you not to answer in the third. Okay. Um, I will definitely say that if I had to compare anything, Metal Gear Solid, or, yeah, Metal Gear Revenge of Engineers. Isn't tight. Sen sent me a text message before the show that said, we're reviewing Metal Gear Revenge and 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 It's like banana. It doesn't stop. Again, we're just making up words now, so it doesn't matter what we call the thing. Metal Gear Puppy Kitten Snuggle. I would play that. Metal Gear Sword Magic Haju Robots. Isn't tight again. Yes. Um, so this game is a Platinum Studios developed, uh, Konami released Hideo Kojima sanctioned Metal Gear game, which actually features Raiden, the one no one likes, even when he became a super cyborg ninja. Like, man, how much does your character suck that you became a super cyborg ninja in a stealth game and still people want to play the normal guy? <clears throat> how bad of a fate is that? It's all Brandon about the head. weird, because he's like a super... <laughs> all right. Hey. Brilliant. Well, we have David Hayter on the podcast, everybody. <laughs> At least his nearest approximation. Good to meet all of you. Yeah. Well, that said, Raiden is still Raiden, despite how much armor you give him and how many super slashy swords. Yeah. In robot yeah, bits. Yeah, it, it's still a matter of, man, Snake would be a hundred times cooler with all of this gear. Hey, you really Did think Raiden you could use it by now? This? Yeah, he really could, because at this point in the storyline, I'm willing to bet he's dead. Um, Revengeance opens three years after the conclusion of Metal Gear 4, Guns mm. of the Patriots, uh, and sees Raiden as a member of the Maverick PMC, a, a kinder, friendlier paramilitary organization um, that contracts themselves out not for peace, or sorry, not for war, but for peace, for the betterment of societies, like all private military corporations do, right? Seems legit. Yeah. So War the... had changed, and now war has unchanged. Yeah, <laughs> because there's no has... longer control. Yeah, but war has war just changes. become stranger, because there's now cyborg ninjas everywhere. Like, apparently that was the big consequence of the uh, Sons of the Patriot system going down, that everyone now has super robot tech. Oh, great. So now they've gone generic. Everyone's got them. They're being sold by the, out by the corners. It's well, to be honest, you boring. Get, you get disappointed in this game when someone doesn't have super tech because when you kill them, you don't get the health regen item. Hmm. Do you actually fight mere mortals? Because it seems like they would fall very quickly versus and they you. they do. That seems like, vastly unfair. Uh, I, I saw the humanoid opponents in this game as, oh, free health. You heal uh, off them? I thought the way you he healed was by ripping robot spinal cords out and getting their robot juice. Yes, but most of the humanoids are actually cybernetic. So you can take spinal cords from them, and they don't fight very hard. So yeah, the, the story is... This sounds kind of gross. is more than a little convoluted, as most Metal Gear storylines are. Um, it's a... It's you a little say. more straightforward, but of course it does have the traditional Metal Gear twists and turns and double crosses that everyone sees coming a mile and a half away. Um, it gets a bit silly when Raiden is ambushed by another paramilitary group called the Desperados, uh, a group of four... Please tell me they wear no, cowboy hats. No, but there is a wonderful sequence later in the game of Raiden wearing a mariachi uh, poncho and hat. Wow, that Quite. image alone just fills me with an un unending rage. He, I have to go punch something later. <laughs> he claims that he's in disguise, but he still has most of his robot bits showing, including his robot heels. That's right, Raiden is the first male gaming protagonist to spend the entire game in heels. Hmm. No wonder. So you mean, like, every single female protagonist? Actually, I don't know if the... Well, I know the female robot that I met in this game was wearing heels, but I don't know if the female humanoid we've met in this game was wearing heels. We've actually never seen the lower half of her body. I mean, in, like, every other yes. game ever. Well, at least now we know why yeah. Raiden's always pissed off. I mean, if I had to fight off legions of robotic ninjas in heels, I'd look angry all the time, too. Actually, Raiden's anger is kind of one of the things I'm enjoying most about the game. The character has really great progression. 
Like, I know when uh, we watched the preview trailer and the demo for this, that it was kind of like, wow, what on earth happened to Raiden? Why is this so messed up? Like, he's talking about butchering hundreds of people and being a monster. And that scene presented in the demo was in no way uh, actually representative of the game. Because hmm. when they play that same scene in Mission 3 of the game, Raiden's talking normally. In fact, he has a conversation with a kid that he had just rescued by cutting one of his arms off. Yeah, that's huh. a unconventional way of rescuing somebody. Yep. Again, Raiden's not that good at his job. But the kid's happy and glad to now have a cybernetic limb, which is going to be horribly traumatic every time he has to replace it every few years with his body developing. Oops, guess we didn't think that one through. Um... So That'd be yeah, a horrible Ryden, hand me down too. As, as the game is potentially uh, going on, Raiden is progressively having a larger and larger nervous breakdown as he falls into this Jack the Ripper personality that he'd been suppressing all these years from his oh, good, like, so maybe, more than traumatic childhood. Well, maybe in the next game he'll be the bad guy and we finally get to kill him. Maybe that's what this is all leading up to. He Kojima's just been spending years and years of building up anger for what's going to be his ultimate villain. To be fair, the opening boss of this game is a super-powered Metal Gear Ray that. that Raiden proceeds to slice in half over quite a long combat sequence. I don't think Snake could take him at this point. Snake can take anything. Blasphemy. Snake will just use sheer willpower to overcome any obstacle. Yeah, he Snake, crawled through the tunnel of know, microwave. That whole perfect Snake thing. Destroy, destroys Metal Gears by convincing them to open their mouth so he can shoot the soft meat man inside. Raiden just chops the thing in half and moves on with his day. So, my concern no with Revengeance that. is, it looks like arena combat sequence followed by arena combat sequence followed by arena combat sequence, gated by walls of red light that have no in-universe explanation. Actually, and surprisingly, they that. do have in-universe explanations. Like, they actually what? went out of the way to explain that one. What the heck could that possibly be? It is an energy field created by the PMC to prevent Raiden from causing collateral damage to the area. Because they understand that this man is a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> so they have to make a giant electronic net just because Raiden goes too slicing happy? To be f completely fair, I don't blame them at all and feel that this He's is the, the best boy. decision possible. Yeah, pi yeah, Pixie's got it. They have to make it a, a gigantic billion dollar, dollar bubble because Raiden can't keep his sword under control. Giggity. He can't keep it in his pants. <laughs> It is to stop you from going crazy. The enemies can run through it as they want. Uh, they don't. They don't, like, run outside of the bubble during combat, but occasionally reinforcements will run in. Oh, because obviously this, these walls of red light are also loading gates. No. No, they don't serve as loading gates at all. Um, the game actually loads really smoothly, and the only time it does do loading is a quick sequence that it does when you press a button to go into the next room. Uh, it's a very, very linear path. It's not open world or anything like the previous Metal Gears were. It is, as you were saying, Pyro, arena sequence, arena sequence, arena sequence, and those are sometimes separated by mini events. Uh, there's a small degree of exploration in finding items and stuff. Uh, right now in the game, I'm doing a sequence where I'm leaping uh, over the uh, high-rise rooftops of Denver, where apparently the most evil of paramilitary groups exists. Also, every cop is a cybernetic soldier. Of course. Um, overall, combat is definitely the high point of the game. Uh, it serves very well uh, that the style is light attack, heavy attack. Um, there are parries, which is your main form of defense, which is you just do a light attack targeting the enemy at the right time as they swing at you. There is no block button in this game, like none whatsoever. If you just stand there, you will be beaten to death. Uh, there is a dodge maneuver... But you're never actually introduced to it. You have to kind of discover it and unlock it through the game's upgrade system, which also isn't really outlined in the game at all. But let me just say, the game's tutorials may in fact be the worst ever presented, which is a shame, because the game's combat is super fun when you learn the depth of it. Hmm. And that's weird, seeing as they have the codec characters who are constantly leading you by the nose over the codec. Seems in like the, they have a in good the Metal Gear framework. games, yes. In Revengeance, it's entirely up to you if you feel like talking to them. The only one you ever really need to talk to is the blonde woman who saves the game for you. But even well, then, the you game... Just beat it in one playthrough, then you don't even need to do that. Well, the game progressively saves as you go. So, you technically, you don't, don't even need to, to talk to her. 
however, I will say that some of these characters are, are an absolute joy to talk to. Uh, the robotic dog that joins your little party uh, after the second mission of the game. Does the yes, dog the talk? dog is an AI. Is it called K9? Oh my god, that's uh, amazing. They jokingly refer to him as K9000 once, but he gains a different name later. Don't want to get sued by Doctor Who. No, it's fine. He mm -hmm. there there are puns in this game and they do make jokes, some of which are actually funny. Like there there are legitimately amusing jokes. Uh, well, that I have trouble believing. Again, they they went with some of the Hideo Kojima style humor and it works. Uh, so there's but, at least one or two poop jokes in. Oh, definitely. Of course. There, there are totally poop jokes. Like, there is a German doctor who talks about Raiden needing to take a doop, which doop. that's apparently an acronym for some kind of radio device. You know, happens if you get one of those in your shoe? Doom step. Doom step. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I'll just kill yeah, myself the, now. The, the combat system is really entertaining, and the, like, free <laughs> slicing mechanic is incredibly fun. When you uh, learn how to use it properly, like the game encourages you to do a couple different things with it. Uh, when a larger enemy is weakened, their limbs will start showing up in blue, which tells you that you can dissect this part of the enemy to remove a system of attacks from it. Uh, the old school go after the boss's glowy bits. Yeah, thing. but you have to make them glowy first. It's not like you can just target it off the bat and remove it. You and legitimately what? have to fight the enemy before you can start taking them down. Is it bad that I immediately thought of Monster Hunter as like See, my go-to? these days I think of Dead Space that way. I thought of Dead uh. Island because once you you can get them in a state where you remove their arms, and then they're like, well, I'm still attacking you, but I don't have any arms, so I, I'm not as effective as I might be. You think zombies might try to, you? Uh, I don't know, bite? Well, well, that's exactly what they do do in Dead Island, and that's what they do in Revengeance, too, is they attack you with their yeah, heads. Yeah, Dead Island, they don't do so much of the, excuse me, glowing. Right. Um, so, chopping up enemies, uh, the normal humanoid enemies, as well as certain robot enemies, have a core inside of them that Raiden uses to restore his electrolytes, because for some reason, Platinum Games thinks salts in your blood are superpowers. So I'm expecting like I, a cross promotional thing. I, with I wanted to make now. Rondo jokes the entire game when we were playing through it. Right, that is a joke plant. that no one will get. It's what plants crave. It's what ro robotic cyborg ninjas crave with high heels. <laughs> so yeah, I did actually make a collection of notes regarding this. Um, the game features a predominant amount of robot butt. Like, of course, every sequence. So, very Bayonetta so far, got it. it. There is robot man butt all over this game. Like, the female characters are more clothed than Raiden is. <laughs> Lovingly rendered. Because Raiden essentially walks around naked the entire game. Because the entire lower half of his body is now this robotic shell that he can apparently just swap out. Like, Raiden can, I guess, remove the top part of his head and just stick it on new bodies. Huh. Like, everything below the jaw appears to be removable. You know the scene in Human Revolution where the sunglasses just slide over his eyes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the coolest thing ever. I I'm imagining a porno where Raiden is like that, and then his metal plates just slide back, and then he's naked. Well, we've all seen that, because everyone here, I think, played Metal Gear Solid 2. So Raiden naked is hardly a surprising thing at this point. Yeah, it's, it's you know, the, the, there's no, uh... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Dignity? Yeah. It's a Kojima game. <laughs> there is no dignity. One of the... I, 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 was, I was going for a surprise there. One of the sure. most surprising <laughs> things is uh, the game never tells you that there's a lock-on button. At no point. Nothing. Uh, from what I've gleaned from you talking to me before we started recording, the game doesn't tell you it a lot. It tells you, like... <laughs> It it explains to you that, hey, if you hold the R1 button, you uh, activate the ninja run mode, which is basically just run, and it has uh, the context to, like, auto-jump over certain pieces of terrain or run up certain walls. Like, that's also, it. while it's, you're holding it's that like, button uh, and moving, you will Zandatsu bullets that are flying at you like a Jedi. Yes, yes, you will. You're going to have to edit that pyro, to do. so have fun. For the record, the Jedi never had to deal with bullets. No, no, actually, they're dealt with well, lasers. Expanded universe, there are mechanical slug throwers, and Jedi deal with them pretty effectively. Uh -huh. They're Fair referred enough. to as, quote, slug throwers, but they're guns um, with bullets. Because the guns game, too commercial. Anyway. 
The game never actually tells you that there are health items in the game, and in fact, I played through the entire first and halfway through the second mission before discovering them while I was stuck in a particularly hard boss fight. Like, one that I spent the better part of an hour dying on. Like, the person who was in the room while I was doing this initial playthrough can attest, we tried to beat this boss for the better part of an hour before I was randomly clicking buttons and discovered the inventory menu. <laughs> what? Oh, the I'm... mystical inventory menu. Yes, that was currently full of three items that upon my death or upon my using them, which if it they auto-trigger upon your death, I don't quite understand why there's an option to use them prematurely, will completely restore your <laughs> health to full. So they're bottle fairy. Yeah. That you can just stack. You can have an unlimited number of these in your inventory, and they auto-trigger when you die. There is no negative penalty to just having them use themselves. But you have to equip them... So, there's no point You have having... to equip them, or they don't work. Which, why you would ever not have them equipped, I don't quite understand. There is no other core item that takes up that same slot that is that important. I suppose the theory is there's a couple of difficulties for the game, and the even harder ones unlock after multiple playthroughs. And maybe if you're being a super serious character action game person, then you don't want to waste any of your fairies on the regular sequences. You want to save them up for the bosses and just do the continue button on the regular sequences. Fair so enough. basically it's an if-you-feel-like-it inventory. Yeah, it I rarely ever use the secondary weapons that you pick up, although some of them are like, there's three different types of grenades that you can use, there are rocket launchers you can carry that don't seem to do as much damage as a sword for some reason. Why is it never the option just to pick up a brick and throw it at someone's head? He is a super ninja, you'd think that would be a thing. True. Um, there are secondary weapons that you pick up uh, from the bosses that you fight, the uh, members of the Desperado PMC. Uh, the first of which being a giant uh, pole arm. <clears throat> and those have some use. They replace your heavy attack button and just change it up a bit. So the pole arm just gives you an enormous radius of damage that you cause with rapid attacks. Um, otherwise, you're just fighting with heavy and light attacks from your katana, which gets upgraded throughout the game uh, as you spend your battle points that you earn. Which admitted, by the first time I actually went to use these things, I had enough to purchase every available upgrade at the time. I have to admit, I'm with Pixie on this one. I feel it feels wrong having a, a group called the Desperados. You don't like to get a big hat for whenever you defeat them. Nope, Bryden gets his big hat on his own. It's yeah. it's twenty thousand battle points to permanently unlock it, but it appears in a cutscene. Maybe it'll is be it a DLC. cyborg battle hat, or is it a cyborg hat? No, it's a giant mariachi hat. It is. Of course, <laughs> it is. It is black and white. Do you mean like a sombrero? Yes, or it is a giant decorated sombrero. It turns out that 20,000 battle points has an exchange rate of about 8 bucks and 50 cents at Party World. Yep. Hmm. Um, the, the highlight of the game, as presented in all of the trailers, is the slice and dice uh, sword mode, in which en enemies get dismembered in horrific ways, and it counts the number of pieces you cut them into. Uh, it does the same for, like, various pieces of the environment and the enemy robots. It's just a little more grim when you do it to a person. And don't get me wrong, that's what these are. The game does not try to defend that, oh, these are just robots. It's fine. No, the game makes note to remind you that, dude, you're hacking up people. These, This dude was planning on going that home tonight. Me. No, it, it paints, paints a very grim he was going to his son's Little League practice tomorrow, you um, monster! There is a potential argument in the game that the actual personalities running these cyborgs could be children who had their brains placed in them. Oh, goody. Like, it's dark, as is appropriate for this game. Like, the kind of actions that you're doing aren't lighthearted. Well, you're destroying enemy robots, but that's fine. There, There's no people around. Go, Go have at it. Feel like a hero. No, it, it's grim. It, it's You're cutting up dudes. Particularly well, for Raiden, the insinuation that the robots would be child brains. Because isn't Raiden's whole vendetta that he's against child soldiers? Yes, that's like and his that's complex. why he's doing all this, to prevent it. Like, it becomes a very clear motivation early in the game that this uh, military group is researching using these children's brains 
put into virtual simulators and then put into live cyborgs. Because that seems to be a brilliant idea. Let's give troubled children the power to lift up a car. Seems to have worked for Raiden. Mm -hmm. It seems to work for Master Chief. I must say, I was ridiculously pleased by the fact that at least one of the codex quotes when you die in this game is Boris, your handler, going, Raiden, respond. Raiden, Raiden. Oh, yeah. there, there's a clip of all of them doing it, all of your various codex. I haven't heard the dog do it yet, which is what I really want. Just pretending to be Otacon. Yeah. Woof. Um, yeah. Woof. Whoa. <laughs> no, the dog speaks perfect English. It, it has a full AI. In fact, during the boss battle with it, he was giving a wonderful discussion on the concepts of uh, freedom and not being a chained AI, which yeah, apparently like Ryan just... idea. So basically, even it's though even though Wolf has been speaking but perfect it's English the whole time, his quote will just be bark, bark. bark. Bar. To be fair, I could see them doing that as a joke. Like Ryan <laughs> has made awesome. dog puns at the thing. Like the uh, like the aliens ending of uh, gosh, which Silent Hill was it? Second. I just find it funny that Ryan decided to keep yeah, the dog, but too. removed its most like yep. its most powerful ability, which was the chainsaw that was attached to its tail. Sure, why not? Allies um, are always less useful once they're on your side. Graphically, the game is a lot like Vanquish in that it's just over-the-top cybernetics and uh, and just insane things that your character is doing all of the time. Like, the game makes a note to show you the most crazy things possible that this character is doing. As I said, the first boss battle is taking out a modified Metal Gear Ray. Just so we can show how completely useless those things are now. Yeah, pretty much. You run up its missiles to finish it off. It's the DBZ. It's the Dragon Ball Z complex. Bringing back old villains just so we can show how strong the new guy is. Like, like I said, I, I just want to see Snake roll up in his wheelchair at some point and look at Raiden and go, Well, I guess I'm done in this world. No, no Snake I, actually pref I actually prefer Snake going up to a wheelchair, having Raiden come by. Come here, I need to talk to you. And just punching him dead in the face. You're still not cool. <laughs> Um, but, but this is probably the coolest you're ever going to see, Raiden. And uh, I'm the exactly. sassy one! Um, I'm the sassy one, Raiden. You know... You didn't even start with a deep <laughs> voice. You were the pretty boy, and then you got a deep voice later. No one even thought yeah. that you were a man. No, really, at this in this game... In fact, the president <laughs> had to make sure that you were still a man. It's true. He was shocked. It. Remember that? Hmm? You got groped by the president. I, I'm willing to bet Raiden actually has the remains of that junk in a jar somewhere labeled The President Touched This. <laughs> because I think that's the explanation of why both Raiden and uh, Adam Jensen are so angry, as we've pointed out. He didn't ask for that. D to be fair, that was that was my yep. fan theory. Just, just calling um, it. I claim that. Snake, you'll be particularly proud to hear that your box does in fact make a return in this game. There are sections where if you feel like doing stealth, which why would you when combat is the fun part of this game, you can in fact put on the box. Well, of course, because why would somebody want to use stealth in a Metal Gear game? It You can if you want, and in fact there is something to be said for sneaking up behind enemies to remove the biggest guy in the room before you continue. Mm-hmm. Like, being able to one-shot a gecko definitely makes fights easier. Let's all face it that, yes, having Snake not in a Metal Gear game is bad and annoying, but if you didn't have the box, you might as well not be ha calling it Metal Gear. Yep. No, the, there are definite references to the rest of the series. Um, recurring characters so far, not so much. Uh, in the five hours I've played so far, I haven't run into a single other Metal Gear character, and I'm kind of thankful for that. Because this is Raiden's story. In fact, I don't think Snake would still really be alive at this point. I think yes, he was he like wouldn't be alive to be in dead. a world full of cybernetics. He could have a uh, cyber. At the very chip. end of Metal Gear Solid Four, he had quote a month to live. Yeah, and it's been longer than that. So, oh, like, come uh, on, we all the, know that Snake can, can regenerate. The I continue to contend that Solid Snake can overcome any problem using sheer willpower, like just straight up manifest in the form of balls of light if necessary. So you mm -hmm. think he's going to hide from death under a box? Of course he is. <laughs> and the Grim Reaper's just wandering around like, now oh, I'm no, picturing no. a wonderful Sims uh, mod. Hide from death under the box. Get away scot-free. Um, the soundtrack to this game is by far the coolest. Uh... Like, it, it's on the same energy level as Vanquish. It's just 
hard rock and techno mixes for every single fight, and the boss fights are all their own original soundtrack uh, that do have vocals that come up. It's great. I, I utterly adore the soundtrack to this. I would consider listening to the soundtrack to this while playing League of Legends. That sounds pretty awesome. But mm. do you have jet some pretty high price attached it. to your calves? Yeah, yeah, you definitely do. What? Okay, Power I'm Power slides boosted I'll by rockets? This. I will your, take this. Your ninja running produces this cool lightning effect on the ground as you move. You can do a power slide with it, which creates a, spar- a trail of lightning. When you are airborne, you can get an upgrade ability so that you can do an in-air slam that closes the distance between you and a target. Like, no, it... See, I wanted it to hate this, much but if we have Vanquish's like, power slide boosted by rockets, then I don't know that I, I'm legally the allowed to. The system is very similar to Vanquish, except you're focusing on a sword instead of guns. And the slicing mechanic is incredibly fun. Like, in the five hours I was playing, I didn't get bored. That's better than I can say for Dishonored. Again, though, can you call this a Metal Gear game if... You're doing all of that if you're jumping it's, 12 meters into the air to slam down onto a giant cyber, onto some cybernetic. But I think that's the difference. Something. This mm-hmm. is Metal Gear Rising, not Metal Gear Solid. Fair enough. In theme, the game is t- definitely so, a Metal Gear game. In the theme of the story, which is man versus military complex, it's totally a Metal Gear game. So what we're saying is we're just moving the franchise uh, horizontally instead of vertically, yeah, it, pretty much. We're done with the snakes and... We're going I don't with even the think high heels. I don't even think we're done with the snakes, necessarily. I think this is just a different uh, franchise in the same universe. What's the I, proper title of Ground Zeroes? Is it just Metal Gear Ground Zeroes? It is Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. All right. That style of Metal Gear is definitely a thing. It, it still exists, and it's still having games made in it. So, Metal Gear Rising is a different franchise. It's it's really Metal Gear meets Vanquish. I will say All this, right. though. With uh, Metal Gear Rising, I'll be very upset if Christian Bale doesn't make an appearance one way or another. Oh, trust me. He's already just mimicking the Batman voice on mm-hmm. a regular basis. Like, that... We were joking throughout half the cutscenes of when he goes into uh, Jack the Ripper mode. It's like, oh, and Christian Bale showed up. Mm-hmm. Um, I want Christian well, Bale to just show up as the voice of Raiden. Be like, yeah, he's a cyborg. He just has speakers in his in his throat, so whatever. He just changes his wants. voice. And suddenly, he's Christian Bale for half an hour. Not even, like, with any context. It just happens. So I was expecting you to say in response to my jetpacks on your calves question, no, and I was going to say nothing else could satisfy. But if that is really the case, then I'll play this game. I'm in. I'm enjoying it. I really am. As much as I went into this game like, huh, it's going to be a joke, it's going to be terrible, I wish I could have rented DMC instead, I'm enjoying it. I really am. It. Even the child character, and I notoriously despise child characters, just all the way back to Bayonetta. Thankfully, Pyro doesn't have a soundboard on him right now. Um, oh, George, but we'll edit it in post. George, despite the fact that he does speak with a specific dialect, I can't identify where George is from. Maybe someone can research that for me. But George's dialect uh, dialogue in the game actually gets a translation window. How... However, I'm not awesome. cringing when he talks. Like, the... Is he Japanese no, Scottish? No, I know he's from a different island group, but for some reason he was kidnapped and is currently in Mexico when, uh, when Raiden encounters him in the sewers. I'm not sure where, what country he's from. Someone can maybe look that up. But yeah, I'm, I'm fully enjoying, uh, uh, Revengeance. Revengeance. Yep, because we can just make up words now. Um, it's actually, it's not a Metal Gear Solid game, and don't think that it is for a second. If if you just want Metal Gear Solid, you're better off just going back for another playthrough of, uh, of Guns of the Patriots. But if you're just, if you want a new style in that world, Rising is fun. Rising is a lot of fun. So while we're dealing with the business of preventing the recruitment of child soldiers, the new Bungie game, Destiny does not feature a protagonist that was a child soldier, or indeed any protagonist at all. You are playing as some faceless multiplayer character that does not have a explicit storyline? What's the deal with uh, Destiny, Pixie? It, it looks like it's just really just a 
teaser at this point. Uh, we're going to probably see more as it comes closer to launch. I'm kind of curious about what Bungie's going to be doing now that it's not... Bungie and Halo have been synonymous for so long. It's it's still weird, and I'm having a, a um, cognitive dissonance trying to process those things separately, even though 343 did a great job with 4. Yeah, and uh, Bungie absolutely sounds like Halo to me, but Halo was not necessarily their only game. Like, they had some success with Marathon before Halo, even though they really seem to have a system of games where you're a space soldier fighting aliens, and then maybe there's a weird story around that. And the revelation of how heavily multiplayer-focused Destiny is going to be has me kind of concerned, because they haven't necessarily closed the door on it having a real strong narrative, but the fact that there's not a strong identity to the protagonist <laughs> limits what you what can do with the narrative, What it seems like they're least. doing with it is they're setting up to build a universe, and it's almost going to be MMO-ish in nature. Yeah, uh, I'm the, seeing the stuff four minute... where people are using, like, their smartphones, connecting them to characters and stuff. Yeah, the, the four-minute preview video that they released this last week distinctly shows an evolving world with ten years of planned content behind it. I mean, the way it sounds, it almost it makes me think of, uh, of Brink, except, you know, better design. Was Brink the one that had Brink no was the one that had no female character it. models in it at all! Yep, we can tell how much I liked that. Time. I was but, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can't wait to play this. And then Sen's all like, yeah, you know, I think I think you might enjoy this. And then he hands me the controller. The first thing I do when I go to create a character is, duh, we're going to swap the gender to female. Oh, wait, we can't do that. I'm yeah, still bitter. Not... I'm still bitter. <laughs> like, it... So I agree with Sen when he says that what Bungie has released about Destiny looks vaguely MMO-ish. And I... Don't know that I want. Like came out two years like, ago. I can I'm still bitter. be convinced, but I, I'm afraid. I think if anyone can pull off the sci-fi first-person shooter MMO, it's Bungie. I mean, effectively, the game I want to see them produce is pretty much Fantasy Star Online with a persistent world with a first-person shooter and a developed universe. Okay, so here's like, a question. I would, I would play that in a heartbeat. So here's a question. Bungie Destiny will be arriving on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and it's supposed to have 10 years of content behind it. It's Are we also supposed listed... to get a new console in the interim between that? Yeah, it's it also, also says... listed as coming out for Orbits and the 720. Yeah, yeah, it says right here, franchise for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and, quote, future generation technology, unquote. A not-so-subtle nod to the Xbox 720 and PlayStation 4. Incidentally, if you're listening to this on WLRA, then probably about an hour after this airs, the PlayStation event will be taking place, so look for that on the Sony website. You'll be hearing all about the PlayStation 4 what he as said. it's announced. Um, okay, well, Sen, if you frame it as Fantasy Star Online, I actually have more interest in the concept, because uh, Fantasy Star Online really is MMO-ish, but it's got, like, a real strong yeah, mission and structure. That's what... There's and that's what I'm world. thinking this is going to be. I really feel like this is going to be a mission structure based game. Where And then you go out with a party of like four people into a uniquely loaded environment that is not really massively yeah. multiplayer. And that's and what I'm thing. thinking this is gonna end up being. Like I really can't imagine them doing a massive like everyone all in shooter that does yeah, that really only Particularly works. since, I mean, I mean, on a console level, how would that even work? It only really works when there is player versus player situations, and only player versus player situations. True, truly, even not everybody's got their consoles hooked up to the internet all the time, even now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, you giggle at that, but I'm one of them. No, 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 not that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I'm reading an article, an IGN article about Destiny. Well. Because I, okay, one, my um my 360 is ancient. I bought it in, like, 2007 refurbished. Um, second point is that it's not wireless. I, you know, run a great big ratty Ethernet cable down the hall to a router every time I want to jump on live. And so, obviously, it stays unplugged most of the time. So, trying to run an MMO on this thing would be really inconvenient, to put it mildly. Is Destiny an MMOFPS? Sort of. 
Is there a subscription fee? No, emphasized Activision Yay. Publisher CEO. Does it require an internet connection in order to play? Yes. Bungie and there boils- was much rejoicing. Yes, and apparently they boil this down to seven key pillars of the game. And it's as if nothing that they're doing contributes to seven pillars. But it does require an the- always on internet connection? Uh, apparently. Yes, to play the game you will have to be online. But I, I, huh. I love the way that they break this down to seven pillars, they say, of what the game's going to be. Pillar Is one, one of them w- orange marmalade? Uh, no, sorry. We oh. have a world players want to be in. A bunch of fun things to do. This is quoting from the article, mind you. Rewards players care about. A new experience every night. Uh, what else we got here? Shared with other people. Enjoyable by all skill levels. And I love this last one here. Enjoyable by the impatient and the distracted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I love that last one. That last one's my favorite. I I feel like that could have been worded better. I agree. Impatient and distracted. What what we're saying is gamers are terrible at uh, paying attention to things. That? Well, League of Legends is a game that I often will not start up because I'll find myself with 15 minutes and not much to do in those 15 minutes. But you cannot play League of Legends in 15 minutes. You have to commit to 45 or you can't play. Um, I've had games go an hour and a half. The idea that they're avoiding that. I was trying to think of what my longest game was. It's probably in that 90-minute ballpark. Yep. Hey, all I've got a link for you you'll love. But the principle Sigh. that it is only going to be a persistent world, I, I really strongly expect that there's not going to be as much of a compelling narrative behind it as there is in the Halo series. Like, I love all of the weirdness about the Ark and the Gravemind and the Retainer and uh, the weird parts of but, Halo but are that's what kind make of me like thing. Halo. Like, I don't want I, the competitive I feel like if any company could pull off an amazing, expansive sci-fi universe in this style of game, it's Bungie. I will certainly investigate it more when it comes out, but right now I'm not feeling very good. Oh, and the when they say that there's, it's going to be, it's going to require a connection... Okay, you're going to be using server resources all the time. That means they're going to have ongoing costs. And what that means is there's going to be microtransactions to monetize this. And yeah, Particularly since there's no subscription fee. Yeah. They have to have some sort of ongoing income if they're going to have ongoing costs. That's just basic business logic. Either that or this will be really short-lived. <laughs> At, I guess I could say they could fund it out of live money if it were Xbox exclusive, but it's not. Yeah, it's not just Microsoft I guess, Baby at okay. this point. Is it cross-play? Is the, is the Xbox universe segregated from the other universes? I don't know that we know that yet. And it's... As far as I know, there has not been a significant video game that has been cross-play between at least the two consoles at and I don't expect that to change because I'm sure Sony and Microsoft are vehemently opposed to it. They just cannot get along. Well, that really is a lost potential. Because they each think they invented the wheel first. Well, they each think that if you have a friend who owns a PlayStation 3, then you better buy a PlayStation 3 so that you can play and multiplayer with And that's not how them. it works. It never has been. Like, that, that might have been, like, okay, there's a very finite window in which that's a thing. And that is, at the launch of the console, you go, okay, are any of my friends going to get a PS3? Well, then I guess I'll get one so that I can play future titles with them. You don't do it, like, this late into the cycle. These things are, what, like, seven years old now? Almost ten? No. That's... No. (sighs) Because we can only afford one, and we're going to make sure that the one that we bought was the right one. And we're going to argue with anyone who says ours is better. Uh, To some extent... To some extent, Gearbox has made some money off this principle off of us on the basis of Snake played Borderlands 2 on the 360, and I played Borderlands 2 on the PC, and Pixie played it on both platforms for the reason that she played multiplayer with both of us and it's not mm-hmm. crossplay. So that kind of is an extra $50 game sale just by being closed and kind well, of. Well, technically it's an extra $120 sale because I bought Snake's copy, so. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> In any case, Gearbox made a lot of money off this, off of this complex. 
I don't like it, but I suppose I can see that the companies might make mm. money off of it. Yeah, but we are but we are not the typical case users in that instance. No, we're crazy. Yeah, That's definitely we are true. insane. I've had pe- I've 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 left a re- I've left a review on Amazon for the Borderlands 2 game, and in it I mentioned, you know, that, you know, this is how the PC one works, this is how the Xbox 360 one works, I happen to have both, and people were leaving me comments like, why do you have both? (laughs) People treat me like the crazy person that I am. If Bungie announces that Destiny is cross-play compatible, then there will be confetti and cookies for everybody. And then the world explodes. Yay! And then the traveler well, to shows be fair, up. We haven't and seen hovers over the last human city over the world. We haven't seen very many fully cross-platform games before. In fact, the only one that's specifically coming to mind is Final Fantasy XI. Did right. Dead? I, I think Dead or Alive might have had a thing. Maybe. Hey, we that had PlayStation Two Xbox. and it was PlayStation no, that... Two, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and PC, all playing on the same servers. Yeah, okay, yeah, it does have PlayStation 2 PC crossplay. Man, that's wild. If only Final Fantasy XI was a game I had any inclination yep. to play. That would be and super cool. It was a good game, but no. no okay, so Dead or Alive 5 has PS3 uh, Vita crossplay, which are well, both thank- in Sony, so. Well, thank goodness for that. Yeah. Of course, I also, I also know maybe one hum, maybe two humans who own Vitas, so. Yeah, I kind of thought the ones. As best I can tell, the primary use for the Vita is as a rearview mirror in racing games for the PlayStation oh, 3. Uh, oh, have either of you looked at this uh, Aquaman trailer that Sen linked us? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, why? Nerd Talk's least favorite superhero! Is apparently appearing in the fighting game we're also not excited to play. Yeah. Because it looks like Mortal Kombat, but with DC heroes. So, so you mean DC the Mortal versus Kombat? Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So they they cut out the Mortal Kombat characters. In fact, it almost looks like the exact same engine. Yeah, it really does. What what I can't wrap my head around is how do you even put Superman in a, fight, in a fighting setting? Yeah, that's just cheating destroy right everyone. off the bat. <laughs> like, this guy can punch a planet out of orbit. Yes, in fact, did you guys ever watch that... Uh... I forget what it was, but someone actually did an entire CG g- generation of... Uh, Superman fighting Goku. That's also not a fair fight. I know. Goku but... dies. Well, <laughs> Superman yeah. doesn't. Well, yeah, but someone actually someone actually went into a, a long, lengthy explanation of what of like the the, the difference in their lengthy. powers. What? As opposed to a short, lengthy. Yes, exactly. But it goes into this <laughs> description of the difference in their powers and exactly why Goku would lose so miserably. Goku, at his best, can lift a continent. Superman, at his best, can destroy the entire galaxy. And he's all like, bro, do you even lift it? <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. I like to imagine that fight going as Superman just instantly slaughters Goku, and then 13 months later, the the Dragon Ball squad has rounded up the Dragon Balls and revived Goku, and then Goku comes back at Superman, and then Superman slaughters him again. And this process just repeats. I forget, can your Dragon Ball wish just be that this person dies? No. I think they they actually tried that with the Saiyans, and he specifically said he can't kill people. So it's kind of like the genie from Aladdin. So he can bring people back, but he can't kill anyone. Well, I was gonna say, the genie from Aladdin also wouldn't resurrect anybody. <laughs> yeah, also, wasn't the genie... Didn't the genie only have, like, one rule, and wasn't it like, I can't make people no, love you? No, 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 I can no, do the whole stick for you if you want. All right. A rule, number, a rule number one, I can't kill anyone. Blah, so don't ask. A rule number two, I can't make anyone fall in love with anyone else. You little put him there. Rule number three. I can't bring the people back from the dead. It's not a pretty picture. I don't like doing it. No, he, he can't. That, he just won't. He says can't. No, but then nope. he says he can, but he doesn't like doing it. It's not a pretty picture. I think you're reading too much into this. <laughs> I'm just accusing Robin Williams of being a liar. Why would you accuse Robin Williams? He didn't write it. <laughs> No, it's not even the screenwriter. It's just Robin Williams. Like, actually, Robin Williams can bring people back to life. It's it's the genie in Aladdin couldn't, but Robin Williams IRL you know, can. I do have one final compliment for Metal Gear uh, like Rising. Oh, goody. You get to punch a U.S. senator. 
a particular one, or do you get to take your pick, or is it a fictional it, it's one? It's a specific one in the story, but you, in fact, do get to have a boss fight in which you punch a U.S. senator. I always feel like that. I always feel like some games like this always have those moments. You get to do this, and that's all you need to know. Well, Hideo Kojima in apparently it was the power slide boosted by rockets. In the prototype, it was being able to karate kick a helicopter. Yep. And Far Cry Three, it was I blew up a shark with dynamite. And in this one, it's I punched a U.S. senator in the face. Um, Hideo Kojima apparently cut together a seven-minute trailer for Revenge and Engine Engines. Are we just trying to see how many times you can get away with adding extra syllables? I want you to stop that right meow. I want a game that has a sequence like that where you punch a senator and then they just release roster updates as Congress <laughs> changes and just pick their least favorite senator and patch him into the game every time or an election happens. Or her, you happens. know, equal opportunity, I guess. Absolutely. That could just be a new app. Punch the senator. Well, no, that's a... Uh... A little bit of a stretch here, but I mean, you can donate. You can donate the. You can donate like the funds to I don't know a charity or the senator's choice or something like that. Actually, that happened, and Apple said it was not within the scope of their iTunes rules, and there is an Android app for that because no rules, y'all. Uh, while we're still on a Metal Gear kick, um, we mentioned Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Uh, it's been confirmed to appear actually later next month at the 2013 GDC uh, Game Developers Conference. Uh, so that'll give us more information about that game. I see so many of these pictures from conventions in Japan of people dressing up as Snake, and all I can keep thinking is, my god, I'm ten times better than that. But, you know, that- the modesty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's me being modest, yes. but can- I mean, I- I've seen some people... So basically with- what we're saying is... You know what? You finally made a character that Western people can cosplay. Let us have it. Please. Please. <laughs> He's like the only character. Everyone else is like a, a tw- like a male twig figure with long flowing locks. None of us can do that. Have you seen the size of an average American? We can't all be the blob. <laughs> <laughs> to be I'm fair, the blob. I have, no, I'm the blob. I have wonderful plans going for a Spider Jerusalem uh, costume because a scrawny I think bald go. man. I can do that. I think I kind of got off track there. I just want to. I just want to rant. Spider exactly scrawny. He's pretty thin. Svelte, maybe. No, probably not. Making up words. We're already Svelte doing is not that made up. Our <laughs> it's a perfectly cromulent word. You smoke word. a lock. Now it just I sounds like I'm should... cursing and Klingon. I think it's time to call this one. All right. So, um. Snake, can we expect you again next week? Uh, I think I can make an appearance if I'm if I'm wanted back. If I'm not hiding in my box, we'll do a vote. Yeah. <laughs> Convene the council. <laughs> there is no council. No, by council, I think he means Facebook. I don't know. Great, Snake killed the council. I think. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> well, they saw the box. <laughs> All right. So next week, what are we doing? I don't know. I just did the most uh, relevant game possible for today. And we already did Dead Space. Oh, next week, the PlayStation oh, event. Oh, so we can talk about that. Okay, that's fine. We've got content. Next week, something will happen. Unless yeah, well, next week yes. is cancelled. Alright, someone get on cancelling next week. All of the content has been released. You've been warned. I can't take you three anywhere. The internet is over. Everybody go home. Even though you probably are home because that'd be, it's the that'd internet. be a great April Fool's joke one day. It's like every website just says, the internet is officially closed. Sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, to be fair, I actually got to hear one of our... I'm going to put my foot down. I'm not playing Monster Hunter 3. (laughs) I I got to hear one of our old podcasts (laughs) being played through an iPhone today. It's a little weird. I don't personally listen to my own podcast, like quality control. Not interested. Also, It's a little little weird hearing me. Yeah, am I the only one that also thinks that whenever you hear... Like, your own voice coming out of a smaller speaker it should be going higher-pitched. Like, it's a little mouse speaking. No, just me? Okay. Seems justified. Well, that might just be you. This. Okay. Oh, you know what's coming out? Um... I'm almost afraid to ask, but go ahead. Another Shia LaBeouf movie. Ah! Uh, another rendition of Ninja Gaiden 2. 5. I'm not well, kidding. No, yeah, it's Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2+, Plus. I know, but, um... But that's actually a thing that's coming out next week. Yeah. God help us all. I was actually referring to where the heck is it? I'm intrigued because oh, no, as far wait, as I know, there's nothing of coming oh, out mind. next week. Next week is boring. <sighs> yeah. 
I was, I was, I was thinking maybe we could do Tomb Raider, but that's not until March. So February nineteenth is apparently where it's at. So it would seem. Also, March twelfth, really? Like, it's like March fifth is going to be time. ridiculous. I'm just going to go right out there and say that. Um, March twelfth is a Blizzard release. You don't compete with that. You don't mess with Blizzard. So yeah, no, says that's, Snake. That's not a thing. Um, yeah. It is going to be busy gaming before the end of Q1, yep, that's for sure. you've got Tomb Raider, ooh, Naruto Shippuden, Ultimate Ninja Storm 3! Oh, goody! And an, uh, Atie game, because Lord knows anime alchemists are totally a thing. Well, anyway. someone's gotta keep the unusual costumers in, 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 employed, for I don't cos- know. For cosplay that no one will ever recognize, there's Altie. And I thought I already had that nailed down with uh, 10-year-old Ubisoft games. Uh, to be fair, Jade was actually on the front of the uh, PlayStation store this week. Mm-hmm. Saw that and thought of you, Pix. Aw, I'm, I'm flattered. Not having so, a PlayStation, I Well, no, the, the first thing that this. went through my head, actually, upon seeing that picture was, why is Pix on the cover of my PS3? Oh, wait, that's a character. <laughs> Okay. Get out that of just my head! My Get out of my head! Why is it on my console? <laughs> it? Okay, you just you lost know, points. <laughs> speaking oh, oh, of Final sorry. Fantasy XI, it's actually getting an expansion on March 26th. That's still coming out. We're still making software for the PS2 after they've stopped manufacturing PS2. Sounds like an that, excellent be business strategy. No, it's the, it's the 360 version, but what the heck? Square, for the love of God, take those people and dedicate them somewhere else. Uh, it's coming to the PS2 what? as well. Yeah. It no, definitely how? is. Confirmed. They, they're not making things for that anymore. They're That's making the this. It's the same people who have been playing Final Fantasy XI since launch. And just the have not they moved on. Else. Like, this is the thing that happens with MMOs those sometimes. Those programmers could be doing anything else. Yeah, like making EverQuest 1 updates. <laughs> oh, hilarious. What the heck? <laughs> I love you guys. There are a group of people at Square that are like, please, let us make cell phone games or something relevant. <laughs> Never get back into the shop. <laughs> Keep making content for that MMO. <laughs> It must feel bad to be living, to be working on a computer that has 32 gigabytes of memory and being like, okay, how can I fit this model inside of, like, 512K? Because that's my vertex buffer on the PlayStation 2. Like, how can I make something for this freaking... What is this? This game has to be, like, at least eight years old now, and no one plays it anymore. Like, the next... And it wasn't really good when it launched. No, the next iteration of this MMO has already come out and failed. Is 14 even still yeah, hosted? Like, is 14 well, no, just they just dead? relaunched it. Oh, right. Boy, 14 yeah. did terrible. Like, there are people still making this game. Okay, so Final Fantasy XI sounds- came out on the PlayStation 2 uh, in March of 2004 in North America. Uh, it was out in Japan May of 2002. So if we go by the oldest possible date, so this you guys have been working years on this. Old. Yeah. Let these poor people do something else. <laughs> yes, you have to admit that uh, Final Fantasy is much like the Sonic the Hedgehog in that they just, just kind of, they just need to kind of take a break. They just need to just put this back but on the shelf and like some money. To to be fair, that exactly. actually did really help Mortal Kombat. Like yes, some- the last Mortal Kombat release was actually an enjoyable game as much as I dislike the core fighting system. There's no shame yeah. in laying stuff, lifts, laying stuff simmer for a while. Like actually, things get missed for a little bit. So you're doing that whole absence makes the heart grow fonder thing. I love you, but I would love you more if you were out of my hair. No, it's more the actually let the character rest for a while and maybe come up with some new ideas before you start vomiting another version of it. To be fair, I don't think anything could help Sonic at this point. You should probably just bury the poor little guy or flush him or something. I don't know, Sonic weirdly came around, like, uh, episode 1 and 2 of Sonic 4 were terrible, and then Sonic Generations was weirdly kind of good. It was kind of good, comparing it to everything Sonic that had come out for the last decade. Okay, that's fair. Yes, yeah, so especially... But it was way people... better. But that's like saying this poop is wonderful because I did not eat fatty food that day. 
<laughs> like, I'm just not going to touch you're, that. You're still comparing poop to poop. You know, I think I'm just going to put the the outro music right there. Just, <laughs> <butter. Butter. Butter. laughs> just cut Come it there. On. It's done. Play them off. Play them off. Give, give me my, give me my get outro. In here. Do, 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 I don't know. Do, do, do. I, if I've got free time, I will probably pick up Nino Cooney at some point because it looks amazing. That I think said, Sid should play Colonial Marines because I want him to suffer. No, I openly <laughs> refuse. Well, I don't know. You already played a record of nope. Agorist War. Nope. <laughs> I'm not the only one who suffers for this show. If anything, Pyro, you should be the one playing Colonial Marine. No PC release. I'm Scott Free. That's not true. It's on Steam. It is? Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, this could go poorly for me. It's on Steam. I'm looking at it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is going to go bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm staring at this. it in the Steam menu right now. He's looking at a giant steaming pile of this game, Pyro. That was yeah, bad. It sure is Aliens <laughs> Colonial Marines. Yep. I've been Have seeing ads for Pyro. a while. Enjoy. Oh. <laughs> Pyro <laughs> has a sad. Let's play. It'll be a fun time. Nope, I did this review. He's on his break now. I get two uh, weeks of being lazy for this. His t- he, he has his time served now. To be fair, I had a great time playing Revenge and Engine, 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 Engine. Okay, the joke's kind of dead, 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 dead now. Nope, gets another EN every time I have to say it. Uh-huh. That would only work if you were accounting precisely. Like, that, that'd that be all right. Just have to, to really do the math on it. Go back and edit that, but that would be really time-consuming. Yeah, you yeah, can add we the extra get this EMs down. anytime you want, but... Anyhow, so we're going to take a break for the week and go play something else. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. I'm Pyrosim. And I'm Snake. And we'll catch you next week on Nerd Talk. Thanks for listening.